and we're joined now by Houston Dash acting head coach Sarah Loudon. Uh, Sarah, thanks for taking the time. I uh, mentioned to Michelle, this is uh, four in a row and beaten for you guys, so congratulations on that. Uh, although, as Rachel said, I'm sure uh, y'all, the team definitely wanted more. Um, but we'll just start off, if you would, just, you know, give us your overall thoughts on the game and how you felt the team played. Well, first of all, uh, I'm very proud of how the club honored the victims of Uvalde, um, and we will continue to help uh, support that community moving forward. So that's the first thing I'd like to say. Um, sorry, what was your question? <laughs> just want to make sure I got that out there. Um, no, I think that's that's much more important. Um, no, just if you can just kind of give your overall sure thoughts on the game and, and how the team played. Yeah, listen, we don't take any points for granted in this league. I think uh, there's so much parity, whether you're four zero or own four. Um, so, but we value wins at home. I thought the first half we struggled. We give the ball away way too much, especially in central areas. Um, lots of turnovers, uh, errant passes. Second half we were better. I thought again, uh, way better than the first half. But uh, in the f first like ten minutes, we had chances I thought that we on another day put away and it's those chances that kind of haunt us later in the game but again I'm part of the team in terms of we have obviously had a couple of games where we've conceded late goals and so uh, overall obviously to to come up with a point at home obviously we want to get three points but again we um, we have to make sure we pick up points and you know we'll, we'll take a point but again when we're at home we're always looking for those three points. Yeah. And guys if you have questions please click the, the raise your hand button. Um, Sarah, you mentioned it off the top there, and I see you've got the, the ribbon on your, your uh, pullover as well. Um, just, you know, seeing, uh, you know, the team wearing the, the, the patches on, on the jerseys, the, the 21 jerseys in the, uh, on, the, on the seats across the way from you guys. Um, I guess emotionally, how was that? What was that experience like for, for you and for the team, um, knowing that obviously you're playing, trying to get the three points, but obviously uh, so much some bigger things happening in the world as well and trying to balance all of that. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when this first transition happened, um, it was kind of being emotionless and kind of being what the team needs. And I think everybody reacts differently to, to different things. And um, it's really hard not to be emotional about that um, for everybody. And um, like I said, I think we, we played tonight for Uvalde and uh, we coached tonight for Uvalde. And I think just the just really proud of the group of how they responded. I know that's obviously um, tough for everybody. So, but at the end of the day, you know, we're playing a game and we're very grateful to do what we love. And it's just a reminder of how precious life is. Thank you for that. Um, I see a question from Theo Lloyd Hughes from the striker. Go ahead, Theo. Hi, Sarah. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, another, another very impressive defensive display. Um, so seeing the XG results come back, 0.35 for North Carolina, which for a very you know, famously attacking team is so impressive. Um, what do you think was the, the key to that tonight? Yeah, you know, over the last few weeks, we've done a lot of video with the team, um, functional work um, in terms of functional clips and functional work and training. And I think that's, we're seeing that pay off. Um, and then again, the team's just buying into what we're asking them to do and um, just really proud of them for Obviously, the defensive display, the the back three were, again, unbelievable tonight. Uh, I don't really think they put a foot wrong, uh, other than probably the goal, um, which is just tough. But, yeah, I thought, again, defensive display, it, you know, to concede as many goals as we, we have prior to now, where we're at, it's it's kind of night and day and just really proud of the effort. And, again, I talked to the team before the game about how, um, basically, you know, we value talent in society. But at the end of the day, if you can, talent really only counts once. And if you can double your effort, in the long term, you'll come out with good results, and that was kind of our message going into this game. There was a you know a really good chance in the second half, Maria with that breakaway, great save by Casey Murphy, a couple of set pieces maybe with the, with the next biggest chances. Are there any ways that you're on the attacking side more worried about maybe trying to create need need to create more chances, or what what you saw tonight was okay? Well, again, I thought we create lots of chances. We got in behind them a lot, um, especially in the system that we played, which we knew we would because we knew against their system, that off system would cause problems, and it did, and so it was working. Um, I think, again, it's just attack and organize is the hardest part of the game to create opportunities in the run of play. That's, I, I've told the team that before, that's the hardest, it's the hardest phase. Uh, everybody argues about how it's defensive, it's really not, it's in the attack and organize shape and trying to, you know, unbalance the opponent, if you like. But again, we'll, we'll look at it, we maybe, we get more time to kind of focus on those things now because of, you know, kind of our defensive display. Obviously, we have to continue to um, be defensively disciplined and organized, like I've hopped on. Um, but now maybe we can we can look at that phase of the game and um, we look at set pieces. It would be nice to start creating some goals from them too. And last one for me: four, four games unbeaten, getting a bit of form together now. Again, confidence, getting again a good point against a good team. Is that kind of 
feeling that in the dressing room on the training ground that this is a really, really strong unit that are going to be hard to beat from now until October? Yeah, I would think so. I mean, I think, again, I think we have a bunch of... Everybody everybody in the locker room is very competitive, so they won three points every game. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of uncontrollables in the sport and uh, we'll take it and we'll move forward. And like I told the team at the end, it's not our best performance. I thought we could be way better. We gave the ball away way too much and uh, we can draw a line under it and analyse the tape, see what the strengths were and kind of move on from there. Cheers, Sarah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, we'll go over to Jeff Kasu from the Equalizer. Go ahead, Jeff. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for taking the time. Um, you, you mentioned kind of coming in at the beginning emotionless. Um, it's been, you know, a few weeks now or months or, or so. Um, just what, what's that? Um, how have you been settling in, I guess, to, to the role? Obviously, still some uncertainty, I suppose. But um, what's that process been like for you? And, and obviously, at a time when this team is, is you know, four unbeaten now. Yeah, well, again, I think every week is different. I've just tried to be what the team needs. And in moments, that is, you know, like I said, it's been positive. In moments, it's kind of kind of putting your foot down and, and kind of setting the standards a little bit or holding people to the standards, if you like. I think I've kind of settled in the sense of um, we've got kind of a routine now being at home. It was tough when we were away because we were on the road uh, three times, which is always tough. But to come away with seven points out of nine on the road is pretty uh, remarkable and really proud of the group. And I think I have a great staff around me and I can't speak enough about Michael, Matt, Hero and uh, Alan. And just really grateful for their support, like I said, without them. Um, you know, my job would be way harder, but they make it way, way easier for me. And that's something I really, really appreciate. Um, and just um, tactically, I mean, we've seen, you know, I guess last week to, to this week, obviously quite a bit of a different look. Um, has that been something that, um, you know, easy is maybe not the word, but that has been kind of accepted, you know, as, as you've thrown stuff at the team and, and, you know, thrown different looks at them as, as how has that process gone in terms of communication? Yeah, there's been a lot of questions that they've had, which rightly so. And so we've tried to make sure we iron out, iron out all those things. Obviously, it's difficult with like the, you know, you're trying to recover your team and there's not a lot of recovery in between games, especially the kind of the stretch that we have coming up. Um, and so we just try and do a lot of a lot of film sessions, a lot of um, meetings where we kind of can break it down um, into kind of a smaller tactical, you know, kind of shift in dots around on uh, the computer, if you like. But we try and iron out all the questions, like I said, and, and they buy in. And that honestly, that's the biggest thing is, is, is getting the buy in. And they've been like the players have been doing everything we've asked and more. And, um, you know, just really grateful for that. And again, I think just the shift that we've had is that was the plan all along was to have this shift um, with Portland and North Carolina. And I think uh, everybody's everybody's done more of what we've asked. So we're just really proud. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll uh, go over to Garrett Heinrich from HoustonDash.com. Go ahead, Garrett. Hey, Sarah. Um, Rachel, Rachel got her 100th appearance with the club. Can you talk a little bit about what she means both on and off the field? Yeah, well, listen, when I, I was here way back when, when I had no business being here um, as a little intern volunteer, and uh, Rachel was brought in. And so it's kind of cool like to see it all come full circle. The fact that she has obviously 100 caps is, you know, remarkable um and so just to see her grow from obviously i've been away but to see the girl from the start to kind of where she's at right now um she's a leader on and off the field and what you're always going to get with her is passion she's a winner and she gives 100 percent in training and what you see in training and what you see in a game is is what you get in training every day and um yeah i've just really enjoyed this stretch of being able to coach her thank you and i see one from uh, adam winkler at abc 13. go ahead adam Hi, Sarah. Um, just want to say, I, I love what you said earlier in the week. I, I too, am married to an educator. Uh, so those thoughts uh, certainly resonated with, with me. And I, I just wanted to kind of talk to, to you about that. You know, you came into to such a difficult situation. And, and, you know, we all looked at it as such adversity. I'm wondering personally for you, looking at what happened in Uvalde, did it settle you at all and kind of give you a different perspective? Uh, you know, after what, what your year has been like? Well, I think, um, not not to make it about me at all, because I don't want to, but um, in this, this coaching journey that I've been on has been kind of a little crazy because we've lived apart for the last seven and a half years. Um, so I can kind of pursue this dream. And so we're still living apart and it's, it's really tough. Um, so yeah, for me, it does hit home because it does make you question a lot of things in terms of how, like I said earlier, how precious life is. And, you know, you only get one chance to kind of run your run your chase your dream if you like so um yeah it's 
it's very personal, I guess, um, to me. And uh, yeah, it's it's uh, I don't know, it's just really it's just really tragic because it's just avoidable, in my opinion. But um, I'm glad you can relate. I think there's a lot of people, like I said, who who can relate to this, and we just need change. I think that's a, a good place to leave it. Uh, Sarah, thanks for taking a few minutes with us. Um, congratulations again on the, on the result and uh, have a good rest of the evening. Thanks, everyone. All right, guys, and that'll wrap things up for us as far as availability for tonight. So appreciate y'all joining Cheers. us.